At times, it seems as though Earth was programmed from the beginning to create a balance among the elements. Oceans, which covered most of the planet's surface hundreds of millions of years ago, became the first stage for the emergence of life. It was in their depths, around 500 million years ago, that the earliest primitive organisms appeared. These tiny, almost invisible creatures laid the foundation for a chain of evolutionary transformations. Millions of years passed. The once vast and endless oceans began to recede, exposing islands that eventually transformed into massive continents. Yet even as land expanded, life continued to thrive in the seas. Over time, an issue arose. With limited space in the water, the number of inhabitants grew. Competition for resources increased, forcing some creatures to make a choice, either fight for survival in the crowded waters or attempt to leave their familiar environment. Those first attempts were awkward and fraught with challenges. Creatures barely crawling onto the damp coastal sands found themselves in desperate situations. Without limbs to move confidently, their fins slid helplessly across the ground, and life outside the water seemed almost impossible. Yet evolution pressed on. Over hundreds of thousands of years, the fins of some species began to evolve into rudimentary legs. The transition to life on land was so gradual that it seemed as if nature itself was hesitating, unsure if the change was worth it. Some of the earliest creatures to successfully adapt to this new environment were amphibians. Born in the water, they spent part of their lives on land before returning to their aquatic habitat. These pioneers were the ancestors of today's frogs, salamanders, crocodiles, and many other familiar creatures. Living between two worlds, they laid the groundwork for further colonization of the land. But the process didn't stop there. For some amphibians, the shores became too crowded. They ventured further onto land, leaving their watery homes behind. New generations were born far from the oceans, and for them, water became increasingly foreign. Thus began an era of terrestrial dominance. Over time, creatures better suited to life on land emerged, the first reptiles. Among them were those that remained tied to water and others that fully established themselves on land. The division continued. Some took to the skies, while others developed strong limbs and became the rulers of the Jurassic era. Dinosaurs became the pinnacle of this long journey. Predators with keen senses of smell and hearing could easily locate their prey. Their strength and speed made them the masters of the land. But even they were the result of millions of years of relentless adaptation and struggle. In the world of ancient reptiles, nature created a complex balance of power where survival depended not only on size, but also on cunning, armament, and adaptability. Predators like Tyrannosaurus rex embodied raw power, but herbivores, despite their seemingly docile nature, were far from easy prey. Among them were giants like Triceratops and Sauroposeidon, each with unique defenses. Triceratops, armed with massive horns and a protective frill, were the tanks of their time. These animals could weigh up to 31,000 pounds, 15 short tons, and their battles with T-Rex were the stuff of legend. Despite its title as the king of dinosaurs, T-Rex didn't always prevail in these encounters. Fossil evidence suggests victories were nearly evenly split. Herbivores often managed to deliver fatal blows to predators with their deadly horns. Meanwhile, Sauroposeidons, giants reaching lengths of up to 88 feet, relied on their massive size and height. Their long necks allowed them to access food beyond the reach of others and to observe predators from a safe distance. However, Sorrow Poseidon juveniles were extremely vulnerable. Young individuals often fell prey to predators like Deinonychus. These fast, agile hunters operated in packs, using their sharp, sickle-shaped claws to pierce even tough hides. At the same time, ankylosaurs roamed the earth protected by armor resembling an iron shell. Their massive tails, tipped with bony clubs, made them nearly invincible against most predators. Even a Tyrannosaurus rex, when faced with such a tank, often opted for easier prey. Hadrosaurs, on the other hand, 
relied on speed and numbers. These herbivorous dinosaurs moved in herds, which significantly reduced the risk of predation. Interestingly, the Cretaceous period became the time when a delicate balance of power was firmly established on Earth. Battles between predators and herbivores occurred everywhere. Life thrived along rivers and lakes, and every encounter between these two groups turned into a fight for survival. The Cretaceous landscapes were filled with danger, cunning hunters and determined defenders, each representing the peak of their evolutionary development. Among this diversity of dinosaurs, some stood out with unique characteristics. For example, Deinonychus, equipped with blade-like claws on their feet, became one of the most lethal predators of their time. These dinosaurs hunted in coordinated packs, acting much like modern wolves. However, they rarely attacked large prey alone, instead relying on their packmates for support. Thus, the Cretaceous world was teeming with fascinating creatures, each equipped with its own strategies for survival in a harsh environment. In the world of dinosaurs, every encounter was the result of a long chain of evolutionary changes. Herbivores, despite their peaceful nature, possessed impressive defensive arsenals. Ankylosaurs, for instance, were known as armored tanks due to their tough, protective shells, which shielded them from attacks above. However, their underbellies remained vulnerable. Predators, much like modern crocodiles, often employed clever tactics, flipping an ankylosaur onto its back. Despite these efforts, even powerful predators like tyrannosaurs and spinosauruses often failed. Weighing up to 13,200 pounds, six short tons, and equipped with a formidable tail club, ankylosaurs were dangerous adversaries. A single swing of their tail could shatter bones or inflict fatal internal injuries. Alongside these armored giants roamed parasaurolophuses in the forests of the Cretaceous. These herbivores were distinguished by the crests on their heads, which served multiple purposes. Some scientists believe these crests enabled communication among herd members by producing sounds at various frequencies. Additionally, the herd could use low-frequency infrasound as a defense mechanism. A resonant sound wave could disorient predators, knocking them off balance and temporarily impairing their coordination. This tactic made encounters with parasaurolophuses risky for any predator. Predators, in turn, evolved no less rapidly. They became smarter, craftier, and more resourceful. Deinonychuses, for example, hunted in packs, employing complex tactical maneuvers. Even when their prey was larger and more dangerous, they combined agility, speed, and group strength to overpower their targets. However, the risk remained high. Inexperienced individuals often died in these confrontations, leveling the odds. About 70% of such attacks ended successfully for Deinonychuses, but 30% turned fatal for them. Herbivores were not passive participants in this evolutionary arms race. Over time, their defensive mechanisms grew increasingly sophisticated. They relied not only on physical strength or armor, but also on social connections. Herd life, for instance, became a key to safety for most herbivores. Ankylosaurs, hadrosaurs, and parasaurolophuses coordinated their actions to fend off predators. Interestingly, the intellectual advantage of predators often became the decisive factor in their success. By developing tactical thinking, they identified weak spots even in the most well-protected herbivores. Yet when herbivores effectively used their defenses and social skills, the outcome of a battle could be entirely unpredictable.